have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Custom Craft and Adventure. Uh, my name is Derek. So, uh, welcome to the second episode of Build Your Own 4x4 Canopy. Uh, in the last episode, I've built this canopy frame. They're all tech welded together, so they're nice and solid. Uh, in this episode, I will start by finish welding the whole frame. So it's basically finished, and then I'll start building stuff on top. So this is the main body frame, and I still have the roof body frame, uh, if you know what I mean. Hopefully it's not going to be too heavy, uh, but I've estimated the whole frame work uh, should be around 60, 50, 60 kilograms, which is actually not too bad. And then I'll consider uh, putting the sheets on top. Um, I, I actually have no idea how to put it on just yet. I'm still in the process of researching. People say gluing, riveting, or just, you know, welding in in uh, every few inches apart, things like that. Do not do the full well, da da da. But uh, yeah, it's still in the process of researching, but I'll start by fully welding the frame up at the moment. It is going to take a little while, so I'll hyperlapse the whole, um, whole recording. Enjoy.
All right, basically the welding is done. Some are good, some are bad, but who cares? It's a process of learning. Uh, the next step is to build the roof. Um, the roof involves a frame, and the frame is made up uh, made of mainly 25 by 25 by three square hollow section. Um, and the design has to change as well because we didn't thought, uh, we didn't think about the, uh, the awning. The, it's a pretty big awning. We can't let the awning stick out by this much. So we have to make a recess to accommodate the awning, uh, if it makes sense. Uh, so some of the measurements have to change and also we have to build a bracket uh, of, uh, for the awning. Uh, essentially it's a mount for the awning and it needs to be carefully engineered as well because it's a pretty big awning, it weighs 30 kilograms. Uh, and you have to think about the swing movement and especially when the awning gets opened, it has to talk to um, twist downwards. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so that's the original design. It takes a full width of the, uh, of the canopy. Uh, but now, that width needs to be narrowed down a little bit because we need to accommodate the awning so the whole thing doesn't get too wide. Because essentially the, the width of the canopy is already wide, we can't let this go any wider. Um, just reiterate, uh, this thing is about this wide, so we have to essentially bring this in about this much. Uh, so, the, well, as a result, we have a, a narrower roof space, which obviously is not desirable. Um, and the whole thing actually has changed. Um, well, inside, I'm around 18, um, uh, 1.81 meters tall. So essentially we designed this so that we can actually sleep on the roof, uh, back to here, uh, head towards this way, legs towards that way, but uh, that's not happening, I'm afraid. Uh, we might have to make an extension somewhere here so we can sleep head pointing the nose of the car, uh, the legs point the end of the car. Uh, so that would mean we have less floor space inside, but uh, well, let's see what happens. We may not need the extension because the legs can be overhang, overhung, sorry my grammar, my English, uh, overhung this way. Um, well, let's see what happens anyway. Uh, and also I've been thinking about sheeting as well. Uh, sheeting needs to go under all this frame and under all that frame as well. Um, yeah, we'll get there and uh, see what happens. Yes, that would mean less space, um, less interior space, but I mean, you've got to find a really good balance. Uh, you need a bit of off-road as well. You can't make things too wide. If things are too wide, you can't really get to narrow tracks. I mean, the, 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 the canopy is already wide and it's taken the limit of a car. And uh, the reason why I built this wide is because I want the, the, um, the space inside, it feels big inside, even though the floor space is small. Um, and I can't let anything get wider than 1860. Um, yeah. You can't really see anything, you can't really see this from happening when you, when, at the time you sketch um, the design, uh, but anyway, well, let's move on. Let's move forward uh, and see what happens. Now, I just want to take the chance. To uh, tell you some, you know, tips and uh, tips and tricks of uh, custom fabrication. Uh, obviously, I'm not a professional fabricator, but as a DIY fabricator, I can tell you a couple of things. When you make things this big, um, you need to make sure things are absolutely accurate or as accurate as possible. Um, we can start talking about measures. Um, you always use the same tape measure, although they're supposed to be the same, but 
In some cases, different meshes may have different, uh, may have a bit of variation. So that's what I'm using. Um, I'm not sponsored by anything, but the, po the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is that you have to use the same tape measure all the time. Um, even with cutting, there is a human error involved. Um, what is accurate for me may not be accurate for another person. So the person who cut things should be consistent as well. Um, and then we have, you know, grinding. Uh, when you use a belt sander like this, you, you have to avoid grinding too much. So uh, the length may not be the same. When you cut mitre, uh, especially when you're not using anything stationary to cut mitre, um, you've got to be, uh, there's a skill involved and also a human error. So if you draw a line, uh, you know, when, when you use something like this, we use a circular saw for metal cutting. Sometimes you can't really see the line uh, and then you have to estimate and then you make a judgment. Now, um, another thing is when you're making things this big, you've got to find a starting point. Um, so that is always the most difficult part. All right, so when you're making things this big, um, there are obviously different approach. Uh, you can, or some people would say, uh, make the mainframe first, and then you put cross member in. But in my opinion, the cross member may be the best place to start because um, they are parallel to each other, right? And they are square cut as well. So if they're square cut, they're usually more accurate than mitre cut. Um, different, uh, in different scenario, this may be different because uh, I'm using a circular saw to cut mitre. It may not be the most accurate thing, but I've got this uh, bend saw. It cuts a 90 degree more accurately than uh, 45 degrees. So that's why I've used um, the cross members, which are parallel to each other, and they are spaced by known measurements. So if they are, if there are spaces, you use a spacer and these can be parallel to each other. So this is parallel and it makes these two parallel. So when they're parallel, they should be 90 degree. So that's my theory anyway. Uh, it shouldn't get anything wrong if I start from um, the roof panel. All right, I'll get started.
Uh, I've changed my decision slightly, but I've got to say what I said before was absolutely accurate. I've start, I've, I started building this frame for the roof, uh, and it's made the whole thing so much more accurate because they were the known measurements. Uh, and now I can ensure this and that are parallel. But I've neglected one point. Uh, there's a gravitational force. The gravity is pulling these two, uh, uh, this one downwards, and that's why I've, I've decided to put this up as well, as well as these 75s and perhaps this, the, the webbing is in the middle. Uh, that's what I'm going to do now before I keep moving forward. Uh, where am I pointing? Of those frames. Uh, otherwise, the whole thing's going to stack because of gravity. Uh, and after I've done the gusset and test on the flexibility, I mean, as you can see, it's actually moving at the moment, if you can see. So this cannot move because it's going to, uh, it's going to tolerate the weight of two people, uh, 140 kilograms, perhaps. Uh, hopefully, it will not move after I put the webbings on. And I hopefully do not have to put so many webbing. Uh, and after that, I'll keep on building this frame.